question. Ask question. <laughs> there is no one that speaks against Prophet TB Joshua that succeed. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Once you speak against Prophet TB Joshua, you become a fool. You become a fool. Once you speak against Prophet TB Joshua, you become a fool. Even those people that left his church that time, that other lady, Bisola, that was speaking rubbish, where is she today? She's finished. Those, if, if you speak against him, eh, he does spiritual work. He will, he, will, he will do something to you. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not about Jesus, Jesus, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. He will do something to you. <laughs> Don't speak against him. If you want to speak, you can speak against your prophet and disorder, suit wearing pastors and jumping up and down pastors. Leave TB Joshua. That man is going to cripple you. I swear upon God, Father. Be very, very careful. But based on our previous video, many people were saying in the comments that um, what Sia One was saying was that um, he himself, of course, he has someone that beats drum for him in the bush for him to come out and act. Or would I say, you know, act as a prophet? No. I said from the beginning, there are only three people that I respect on earth. And when I tell you that this person is real, believe me, it's real. Of all the prophets, all the pastors, bishops that I've seen on earth, I'm not against anybody. But there are only three of them that I respect. Number one is God's father. That is my spiritual father. The one that gives me power. The one that is behind me. The one that beat drum for me in the bush for me to come and dance in public. Even though you might be honest that you are believing in God, but the signs and wonders which they know the Bible says shall follow them is what they use diabolism to trap you in because when once you see signs and wonders, of course, you would follow. You should strive as much as possible to know the Jesus of the scriptures. Now, I know most of the people that watch me may not be Christians, but it's okay. But let's get straight to the conversation of what Busola had to say about the person of Siawan when he talked about TB Joshua. TB Joshua is someone that has been very controversial with respect to how people see him. The Christian community in Nigeria, let's not even go there. He's seen mostly as an outcast. Now, every person I would say that loves him or respects him or values him, I will see them to be in the same WhatsApp group, more of like. Like when he died, we made some a couple of videos about him then. Uh, Iginla was there. Uh, later, I'm going to be looking at the correlation, a correlation about Iginla, Jeremiah, TB Joshua, and many other significant people that loved the person of TB Joshua while he was living and even reacted positively while he died. Now, if you didn't follow my videos at that time as well, I made a video, I will link it in the pinned comment, defending the person of um, Pastor Ia Adeboye that was purported to have hated the person of TB Joshua or instigated a particular quote that people said that Ia Adeboye said TB Joshua wanted to kill him. That was a lie. I proved it, okay? To correct, but to answer those who were saying that what I played in my previous video was wrong or what I made, the comment I made, in case you forgot this comment. I'm having a, an open question right now for you, my dear wonderful viewers. If this one man here claims he knows TB Joshua and knows who is beating his drum for him in the bush, who was TB Joshua for real? This is what um, CR1 had to say that I did not play in my previous video. Opinion is free. You can talk what you want. You can do what you want. But I respect him. Those people that posted that thing claiming that CR1 was attacking Prophet TB Joshua, I know that I can never do those things. In December, I was in synagogue. I was there. I know what I'm talking about. TB Joshua is not an ordinary person. TB Joshua is a powerful human being. I can never attack him. Never. I can never attack him. Even if he does bad things to me. I can, even if he speaks bad thing against me, I will never attack him because I know I know where he's coming from. I know the, the what is playing drum for him in the bush that is making him dance in public. So I can never, never attack him. I will never attack him. He's a man of God. He's a power. I don't understand. Those of you, those of you that don't know him, you don't know what you are talking about. Check his background. Check where he's coming from. Check 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 him you don't know him so i can never attack him never attack him never 
there is a man of God that attacked him. You know, there is, this thing of Pentecostal church is a very big Pentecostal is a very big problem. There is one man of God that went to visit him one day and he was praying in the mountain. He invited the man of God to the mountain. As they were praying, the man of God came back to South Africa here and said, I went to TB Joshua Mountain. I saw him with a snake. I saw him playing with a snake. I saw him cuddling a snake. That man of God died of cancer. Hello? There are people you cannot play with. T.B. Joshua is one of those people that you cannot play with. I know where he's coming from. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so right now you can see that, of course, the person of T.B. Joshua, according to Sia One, who is a spiritual man and all that, according to him, he has someone that plays drum for him in the bush as well. But I'm now asking myself a question. If there is someone playing drum for him in the bush, for him to act in the physical, or would I say for him to come and display, who is, is the same person playing drums for his wife right now that has taken over the ministry? Because, you understand, I'm not really seeing that much of like, you know, what TV Joshua does with respect to the wife. But is the same person also playing drums for the person of John Chi and other of his disciples that still exist today? The reason why I don't try to be in the place of a judge where I get to define these people is more of like that. Is because God himself knows more. Of course, we know that from scriptures, by their fruits you shall know them. Tomorrow, if you, if you hear something about me or see me do something wrong, would you, are you automatically going to define me by that? Everyone, of course, do make mistakes. You have sinned before. Are you without sin? So I don't get to define people by their sins. But most of the time, I will speak to that particular fault or that particular error I've seen. But I don't, I don't want to define you by that because I don't know the will of God or the mind of God who is all-knowing and all-encompassing. You understand? <laughs> but in this video as well, looking at this same Sia one, this is some things I, I got to hear him say about his person and how he gets to function as, as a believer. Uh, that uh, that uh, that school of theology, Godfather told me to go to that school, so I went to that school and started studying in that school. But when I entered in that school, I was uh, humiliated because everybody there knew that I was coming from Godfather. They were telling me, "See a one, mm, you are a satanist. Mm, see a one, you are a demon. Mm, see a one, you are you are going to die. Godfather will kill you. See a one, this. See a one, that. See a one, Godfather is this. See a one, Godfather is that. You know what? I became afraid i became afraid and one day it was a weekend i went to godfather and i told him to say you know where you asked me to go to school they are victimizing me they are segregating the 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 they don't they don't love me they are saying i'm uh, that i am occultic they are saying i am demonic godfather said why I said, because they know that I'm coming from you, Godfather. So they don't want to associate with me. Godfather, and they said, the, the, the word of God, the Bible, has too much power. And then, uh, uh, what you do is satanic. Godfather told me to say, Andrew, come. I went in. He took me to one of the rooms. And he removed the gun. And he cocked the gun loaded it with bullet and he cocked it and then he said come i came he touched me he did work on me he poured do as i say on me and he told me to stand there i stood there he pointed gun at me i was shaking i was shaking i was shivering he released bullet ta, 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 on me when he released the bullet the bullet did not enter I've been attacked so many times in Zambia. I, it's uncountable. Here in South Africa, it's uncountable. The bullet did not enter. Then he said, hey, come back. Come. Sit down. I sat down. He took a Bible. He took a Bible. And he, he put it on top of... A, a, it, those of you that know boutique, they are these things that look like human beings. Those things where they put clothes, he put that in and put a Bible on top of it and cocked the gun and shot it. That bullet scattered the Bible and scattered that thing. He asked me a question. He said, see one. He said, Andrew. By then I was not called see one. He said, Andrew, 
between this power that you have seen and this thing that you are hearing, chose one. I said, I will never stop serving God, Father, because I've seen power with my eyes. Hello? Even if you are watching me now, you are watching me here today. I want to tell you that I will never stop serving him because I've now, seen, the funny I've thing seen is that power. I, I don't know where to place him, whether he's a Christian or not, because he uses the Bible for what he does. The culture they left for us is gone. Very soon, there will be nothing like culture in Africa. All of us will be carrying Bible. Oh, Zana. Oh, Zana. Carrying Bible and doing what? Cultures are finishing. If you are watching this program now, look at your village. There are good cultures that we are helping your people. Good cultures that we are healing your people. All those cultures are gone because of Bible. Yes. Gone. Completely gone. Gone and gone and gone. Those cultures are no longer existing. Those cultures have gone. We don't respect our culture. When you are sleeping and you dream of your dead, uh, 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 your dead parent that came to you, when you wake up, you start sending Holy Ghost fire to them. Sometimes they want to communicate a good message to you. <laughs> they want to tell you something important. But when you wake up, you call your prophet. Your prophet says, that is a spirit of dead people. That is ancestral spirit. Kill it in the name of Jesus. Send the Holy Ghost fire in the name of Jesus. How come white people are not sending Holy Ghost fire to their ancestors? Tell me. How come? Our ancestors are crying in the grave. They are saying, ah, it was a mistake to be born in Africa. The culture they gave us, gone completely. The culture they gave us, believe me, today, culture is gone completely. That is why today you can see that a man, is, a man is marrying a man. In Africa, a man is marrying a man. Hello? A man is marrying a man in Africa. Abomination. In Africa, a woman is marrying a woman. A woman is marrying a woman. Where are we getting this thing from? The same people that brought us Christianity are the same people that are bringing this type of thing in Africa. It was never like that. When we had culture, we feared our culture. We had, we had righteousness. Those days, it, it, let me tell you something you don't know. Those days, without, when there was no Christianity, a, a married woman can never sleep with a married man. It's not possible. They will be afraid of the ancestors. They might be killed. But today, pastors are preaching in church and they are sleeping with members that are married. They don't care. They don't think about it. And you are telling me Christianity is a good thing. You are mad. Believe me, you are mad. In those days, you see in those days, when there was no Christianity, a woman would never, never think about marrying a woman. They will be afraid. They will say, no, 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 no. This is abomination. Today, <laughs> the same people that brought us Bible, they are the same people that are bringing it here. And I can tell you that here in Africa today, there are pastors that have accepted it and they are wedding them in church. And you are telling me Christianity is a good thing. And you are telling me religion is a good thing. And you are telling me that is what God wants for us. It's a lie. Believe me, in those days, in those days, you will never see a married woman sleeping outside. If he does, the ghost will kill that woman. But today, we have lost that culture. In church, inside the church, behind the church, in the office, pastor will be sleeping with married women. After sleeping, she will come and, he will come and say, praise the Lord. And the congregation will say, hallelujah. Rubbish. Nonsense. Foolishness. I know many pastors that come here to collect power. They come with their gay friends, but they have wives. Not one, not two. I don't want to mention anybody's name. Many of them are watching me. They, they have wives. They come here. They sleep in a hotel for three good days that I will do their spiritual work. They are sleeping with a lady. They have a wife at home. They are sleeping. They are fornicating. In those days when it was our forefathers, such a thing can never happen. A priest 
It's a sacred thing. But today, because of Christianity, everything has scattered. Everything is gone. Everything is destroyed. Many of you that are watching me now, you are sleeping with your pastor. You sleep with your pastor. You sleep with your bishop. You are sleeping with them. And after sleeping with them, you go to church and the pastor say, praise the Lord. You say, hallelujah. Is that, a, is that what you want? Ah, ha, ha. I have caught you. I have caught you there. I have caught you there. Eh? I have caught you there. Yes. You must know that Christianity is fake. If Christianity is not fake, you see in, in Godfather's club, where we belong there, eh? you cannot lie. If, if you want to go and meet Godfather today, you must start being holy five days before you go there. Even if you were, you, you will be holy, if you go there and lie, you will die there. It, it tells us no matter the matter, you will never sleep with a married woman. It tells us don't do bad things. Don't do anything you do to somebody. Another person will do it to you. There is, there is, there is order. In those days, where there was no Christianity, there was order. Men of God drink. Uh -huh. I'm not saying I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm not a I'm, me I don't put myself in the category of men of God hello <laughs> I don't put myself there but me I can finish drinking and come to church and preach all of you that drink will go to hell that I I can never say such thing those of you that come to my church we know that I don't talk such rubbish in church in church. Pastor is preaching. Pastor is sending his people. Go, that girl that came, get her number. After the, after the church service, pastor will sleep with that girl and come back next Sunday and say, praise the Lord, and you say hallelujah. Is this what you want? You know, all of you that are watching this program, you know that what I'm saying is the truth. What I'm saying is not lie. What Sia one is saying, I say the truth. Because the Bible itself says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The people that are leading Christianity are married and getting divorced. Our forefathers never got divorced. They treasured marriage. But look at our big, big men of God. Divorces. They don't even care. They are married and they are cheating on their wife and they are still preaching. That is rubbish. That is rubbish. Do you want me to mention their name? There are too many. They are married. They are cheating. They are cheating. They are sleeping with married men, married women in the church. Let me tell you, today as I'm talking in Africa, there is a, there is a, a what? There is a marriage between a man and a man. You see here, white people have brought it to us here and we are enjoying it. Now we see here in Africa. Here in Africa, I see. They brought us Bible and they brought us those things. Which one are we going to believe? It's just for you to know that those things are actually man-made things. What is your relationship with God? The time that God created you in his own image. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. It says he created you in his own image. Nothing is missing. You lack nothing. You are already like God. You are already like God. What else do you want to do to be like God? A white man comes and tells you, put my picture here. And foolish African people, some of you that are watching me, there is a picture of a white man that is hanging on your wall. And you are calling him Jesus. Are you mad? Who took those pictures when Jesus was here on earth? There was no camera. There was no camera when Jesus was here on earth. There was no camera. White man did that thing and deceived you and you believe it. Many of you even go and kneel down on that picture and pray, Jesus will thank you. What are you talking about? 
If you want to see how Jesus looked like, look at yourself in the mirror. That is how Jesus looked like. And yet still, he comes out openly and tells you clearly where his, the source of his power is. So, the concept of Jesus is just one, or is just an attachment he has for the Christians themselves to accept him. But yet still, beyond that, he does some extracurricular things. No wonder he would say that he respects the person of Olukoya and the person of T.B. Joshua. So looking at these two significant people right now, people got the impression that when he was saying that they are real in my previous video, he was endorsing them to be really of God. But right now, with what he has said, which I didn't play in my other video, about the person of T.B. Joshua, you understand what he means by they are real. It's more of like power past power kind of situation. But when they are clear like this about their purpose, what they are doing and all that, if you listen to him, he says that even pastors themselves go to him to go and buy his magical powers and the things he sells. For them to come to your church and then use that to mesmerize you. You see, you see all these churches that spray water on your face, carry oil and put in your mouth, all those things, put oil on. We are going to be discussing all those things much later right here on the platform. I've just not had time because I'm very much engaged with work. Right now I'm shooting from work. Normally if you watch my videos, you see that I get to shoot in a greasy train and all that. But I have to really, really go beyond to make sure that um, I'm bringing you this value. But tell me what you think in the comments as well. I would really love to read your comments. Hallelujah!